Hello, and welcome to ASQ Quality Management Division's video learning series presentation of quality tools and the QMD Content Management Committee for Body of Knowledge, Section 3. My name is Doug Wood, and today we're going to talk about several different steps through this talk. Who is the Content Management Committee for Management Elements and Methods? Why should you be involved in this committee? What's included in the body of knowledge? We'll do a quick overview of this portion of the Certified Quality Manager Organizational Excellence body of knowledge that's called Management Elements and Methods. And how can you get involved in this committee? So what is the content management committee for management elements and methods? Well, it's a group of volunteers that are working together to increase uh, materials for ASQ members seeking to enlighten themselves about what is this portion of the body of knowledge for certified quality managers. The current team is listed below and you see uh, the various individuals who are involved in this. Our chair, uh, Luigi, is primarily the person to contact if you are interested in doing more. So what does a content management committee do? Well, they're responsible in this case to solicit and review and approve content for the quality management division. Also to manage content in the quality management divisions community on MyASQ. If you're not a member of MyASQ, we're encouraging you to join it. Uh, as, as an ASQ member, you have access to this and you can ask questions and you can research materials in, in depth through that MyASQ portal. Uh, the committee also serves as subject matter experts to do peer reviews on materials before they're placed into the MyASQ area. And they're to develop and review training material in collaboration with the Quality Management Division's Education Group. Besides collaborating with the Quality Management Division's Education Area, there's also collaboration with other divisions within ASQ to deliver sponsored webinars. Uh, developing content, articles, books, training material, tools, and to partner with related ASQ technical communities where appropriate. To publish this material in appropriate uh, venues. And also, the CMC represents the Quality Management Division at conferences that are appropriate to the content being managed. The results of all this activity is to create relevant contact for the quality management forum and upcoming virtual and face-to-face -face events. Also to develop content for additional delivery methods such as webinars, YouTube, books, training materials, tools, eblasts, and many more. Now about the content. The CMC for Management Elements and Methods covers these five areas of the body of knowledge, the body of knowledge for certified quality managers slash organizational excellence. Section three of that body of knowledge consists of the following categories, management skills and abilities, communication skills and abilities, project management, quality systems, and quality models and theories. We're gonna go through each of these five First of all, principles of management. Uh, this area uses basic management principles such as planning, leading, delegating, controlling, organizing, and allocating resources. Management theories and styles looks at management theories such as scientific or organizational, behavioral, learning, systems thinking, situational complexity, and so on. The uh, candidates applying for the Certified Quality Manager are expected to define and describe management styles such as autocratic, participative, transactional, transformational, 
management by fact, coaching, and contingency approaches. They need to be able to describe how management styles are influenced by an organization's size, industry sector, culture, and competitors. The interdependence of functional areas harkens back to Dr. Edward Deming's uh, drawing, his diagram showing the various functions within an organization and how they relate to each other, the flow of work. In this section of the body of knowledge, it talks about describing the interdependence of an organization's areas, like human resources, engineering, sales, marketing, finance, research and development, purchasing, information technology, logistics, production and service, and others. <clears throat> and how do those dependencies and relationships influence processes and outputs? Human resources is a part as well. If you're a manager, you need to understand about HR. So in this section, we talk about how to apply HR elements in support of ongoing professional development and what that role is in quality systems, setting goals and objectives, conducting performance evaluations, developing recognition programs, and ensuring that succession plans are in place where appropriate. There's a piece of financial management here as well. Candidates to be a quality manager need to read, interpret, and use various financial tools, including income statements, balance sheets, product or service cost structures, and others. They need to be able to manage budgets and use the language of cost and profitability to communicate to senior management. Some of the various uh, alphabet soup characteristics for this include return on investment or ROI, return on assets or ROA, net present value, NPV, internal rate of return, IRR, and portfolio analysis to analyze project risk, feasibility, and priority. Risk management is a piece of this. We like to say that risk is your compass. So quality managers need to be able to identify the kinds of risk that can occur throughout the organization from such diverse processes as scheduling, shipping and receiving, financials, production and operations, employee and user safety, regulatory compliance, and how to manage change and the risks that come from it. The final piece of this area is knowledge management. Knowledge management is of crucial need today as we see high turnover in our various companies and industries. Quality managers need to use knowledge management techniques in identifying the core competencies that create a culture and system and collecting and sharing both implicit and explicit knowledge among workers, stakeholders, and even competitors and suppliers to capture the lessons learned and apply them across the organization to promote best practices is another key piece of knowledge management. Managers, candidates for the quality manager are expected to identify typical knowledge sharing barriers and know how to overcome them. Our second major area in this body of knowledge is communication skills and abilities. Quality manager candidates are expected to define and apply various modes of communication within their organization, such as verbal, nonverbal, written, and visual. Identifying factors that can inhibit clear communication and describe ways of overcoming them is another piece of this area of knowledge. Secondly, interpersonal skills. Use, managers are expected to use skills in empathy, tact, friendliness, and objectivity. To be open-minded and non-judgmental and use that to maintain clear communication methods and channels. Developing and using a clear writing style is important, as well as active listening and questioning and dialogue techniques that support effective communications. Communications continues in a global economy. There are some major challenges of communicating across time zones, cultures, languages, with terminology and business practices that differ. And the materials 
present ways of overcoming them. <laughs> Communications and technology is, is the next section. And yes, technology is involved in our communications. We all know this, but quality managers need to know how to identify how technology affects communications, including improved information availability, its influence on interpersonal communications, and the etiquette that's necessary for effective e-communications. Managers in this area need to develop appropriate communication methods within their virtual teams. Section C, or third one in this body of knowledge, is project management. To begin with, project management basics cover me me the methodology that we've known for years. And these are used to ensure that each project is aligned with strategic objectives. That's where it begins. But also, there's a need to plan the different phases of a project, you know, initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and controlling, and closure. A manager of a project needs to ensure the project is on time and within budget during the execution of the project. So there's various alternate project methodologies today. Uh, linear project management, which is the one we've known for years, but there's also evolutionary or iterative techniques, and these apply to projects and change project management significantly. So some of the project management and estimation tools are necessary to be known as well. So there's risk assessment matrices, benefit cost analysis, the critical path method, abbreviated as CPM, using a Gantt chart, or PERT, Program Evaluation and Review Technique. Also, building a work breakdown structure, usually just abbreviated as WBS, to plan projects and estimate related costs. We can't forget measuring and monitoring project activity either. There are various tools used here, such like cost variance analysis, milestones, and comparing actual versus planned budgets to monitor project activity against the project plan. Projects need to be documented as well. Written procedures and project summaries document them and maintain a record for future use. Section D is about the quality system. Obviously, a quality manager needs to understand this. They need to be able to develop and monitor the quality system, the quality mission and policy, and ensure that it is aligned with the organization's broader mission. Quality planning, development, and documentation is also a very high concern here. Managers need to be able to develop and deploy the quality plan and ensure that it is documented and accessible throughout the organization. And finally, let's not forget about having effectiveness measures. To evaluate the effectiveness of the quality system, there's other various tools, balanced scorecards, internal audits, feedback from internal and external stakeholders, including complaints, warranty or returns from the field, doing the data analysis of those things, product traceability is part of this, as well as recall reports and management reviews. There have been many quality models and theories over the years, and understanding what they are helps you to understand what we are currently doing. First of all, there's quality management standards. So a quality manager at the beginning needs to understand the basic principles and the requirements of ISO 9000 based standards. These are used to support quality management systems. Of course, ISO 9001 is only one of them. Performance excellent models take you beyond the foundations of ISO and into what does it mean to have an excellent organization. So in this area, managers need to define and describe common elements and the criteria of various performance excellence models such as the European Excellence Award, Excellence Canada, 
the ASQ International Team Excellence Award, often abbreviated as ITEA, or the Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award in the US. Managers are expected to under describe how their criteria in these fields are used as management models to drive and improve processes at an overall organizational level. And we move on to other quality methodologies. Some of these have been true in, in use in the past, but are still there. TQM or total quality management is one, one such uh, quality methodology. Continuous improvement and benchmarking are two others. And finally, there's various quality philosophies that have been developed over the years. Uh, understanding what these quality leaders have taught us is important. Walter Schuhart, Edward Deming, Joseph Duran, Crosby, Fiegenbaum, and Ishikawa are all individuals that have developed and built the philosophies that lie behind our quality systems today. This is not just mere history. What these individuals have done is lay the groundwork for most of what quality consists of today. So that's our overview of the content of the body of knowledge. How do you, how do you become involved in this quality management divisions, content management committee for management elements and methods? First of all, We'd like you to provide your ASQ number and your resume or CV to uh, the chair of the division. Also, to make sure that Quality Management Division is a division selected in your online presence in the American Society for Quality. So on behalf of Luigi and the Content Management Committee for Management Elements and Methods, this is Doug Wood. I want to thank you for for following this video and encourage you to participate, to become a part of this, this effort. Thank you.